Number 10, okay, if uh, L is, if L is the line AX plus uh, AX plus uh, 3Y equals 0, uh, K is the line 3X minus 5Y minus 4 equals 0, two lines, find the value of K. So we're going to use Y equals MX plus C. What we're going to do is we're going to get them both on their own, so we're going to get a, bring AX over the other side, we're going to get 3Y equals minus AX. Therefore, y equals minus a over 3x. The m value is a over 3, so the slope is equal to minus a over 3. Okay. K is bring the 5y over the other side, and we get 3x minus 4 equals 5y. Divide across by 5, we're going to get 3 over 5x minus 4 over 5 equals y. Turn it around y equals 3 over 5x minus 4 over 5 and what we can see here is that the slope is uh, 3 over 5 now if the slope of this one is 3 over 5 the slope of the other one has to be minus 5 over 3 because you turn it upside down and change the sign because it's perpendicular this means that a therefore is equal to 5 because it's minus a so it has to be minus 5 over 3 that all right? Any questions? Like this, it's uh, very important that you uh, draw an XY axis, okay? Once you've drawn your XY axis, what you're going to do is uh, P is minus 1 minus 2. So just quickly draw a couple of, uh, couple of numbers. You don't even have to label them, to be honest. Just need to know roughly where you're at. Each one. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. One of them is A2, which is going to be all the way across here, up here. This is the point uh, R. Okay, the point P is located where? Minus 1, minus 2. Now, there's something you need to know. See the way it's in order? P, Q, R, S. If I was to write this in order, P, Q, R, S. P and R should be diagonally opposite each other. And Q and S should be uh, in the same in the same region uh, with each other as well as in as in uh, their diagonal opposite each other. So when it comes to parallelograms, okay, I had PQRS written there a second ago. Q, let me in. PQRS. The slope from P to Q is the same thing as the slope from R to S. Is that all right? And the slope from Q to R is the same thing as the slope from P to S. So let's figure this out. Now, P to Q. Q is 5 up, but we don't know where it, where it is. Q could be anywhere. It could be down here or up here. Okay? So this is the point Q. Q is located on the line uh, X equals 5. Okay? So it's located here. Okay? Q is somewhere on this line coming downwards. Okay? And then S is located somewhere on the line, Y equals 1. So S is going to be located somewhere around here, because it's stuck on H1, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to do translations, okay? Now we're going to show you what a translation is. The translation from P to Q is the same thing as the translation from S to R. Now, to go from P to Q, what we have is uh, minus 1, minus 2, and that goes up to uh, 5K. So look, P to, P to Q, Q to, P to, sorry, what's Q again? I have to keep going up here, 5K, and then S to R is going to be H1 to A2. Now here's here's what's happening, okay? For this one over here, we don't know what we're adding to the Y value, but we know we're adding 6 to X. So if we add 6, if we take it, we added 6 to X to get to 8. So what does that mean H is? 2. So H is going to be 2, 1. Now how much did you add to Y to get it from 1 to 2? Add one to y, so we had to add we had to add one to y, and this will make this one 
5 minus 1. Okay, now if you really wanted to check it out, you could draw it out using the coordinate diagram and you can see that it works out as a perfect. Is that the answer to the back of the book? So we're now finishing off uh, question 13 part 4. Okay, we found out the coordinates of Q was 2 minus 1. We found an equation on the line, uh, equation of line J such that it's, parallel, uh, it's perpendicular to line L and Q is on it. So this is the point uh, Q here and this is the line J going up through it and this is the line L going to that way, right? We did that and what we found out was the equation of that line was uh, just check the back of the book to verify this the, the equation of the, that line was 5x plus 2y minus 8 is that verified? before I start the next part this is a uh, question 13 part 2 perfect thank you okay find the coordinates of the image of R under axial symmetry in L okay now what happens here is we have a uh, point R okay point R is 4 minus 6 okay point R is 4 minus 6 and we've already verified in part 3 that the line 4 minus 6 we've already verified that 4 minus 6 is on this line haven't we yeah so 2 minus 1 is up here where line L hits line uh, J okay 2 minus 1 is located here yeah and we have to figure out what happens when you bring it all the way up to point Q and the same distance back out again the other side so Tell me something, right? You write down the point. You write down the point R. The point R is four minus six. When we bring R all the way up to two minus one, what's the rule? How many values? How many block x blocks do we have to go across? We have to go from four to two. So that's minus two to x. And what's the other one? Minus 6 to minus 1 to y. Now we have to go out the same amount out the other side. So what are we going to get here? Take 2 away from x, we get 0. Add 5 onto y, we get 4. Okay. I'm going, uh, lads. Here is the point, is the line L as will be drawn in the diagram. Here is the point J. The point Q is 2 minus 1, isn't it? Looking at your question, yeah? 2 minus 1. The point R is what? What did they say R was? 4 minus 6. 4 minus 6, exactly, right? Now, look at this. To go from R up to Q, you go across 2, up 5. Then to go the same distance out the other side like a mirror image, go across two, up one, two, three, four, five. And that leaves us at zero, four. And that's how you do axial symmetry. Okay? That is axial symmetry of the point uh, on the bar, this is R. Axial symmetry in the line L, and it goes up again. It's like a reflection. Is that right? Cool. Alright, guys. Uh, okay guys, so what we're doing here is show that the point 2 minus 5 is on the line 3x minus 2y minus 16. Plug in x equals 2, y equals minus 5. It does work out. It says show that. It doesn't say investigate if. Show that means it's definitely going to be on the line, okay? So 2 minus 5 is on the line. Now, the translation, okay? Now what this means is when you have a translation, okay? You have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of points on a line. One of them being two two minus five. Okay. Now what happens is two minus five. It two is added to the x value, so add two to x, and then the other one is add minus one to y. Now what happens to each point is it goes across two down one, so it ends up down here. 
So if you imagine each point, each point gets changed to the same degree. Okay? And what's going to result is a parallel line. Okay? So that's usually what happens is it, it will, uh, a parallel line will result when it gets thrown to symmetry, okay? Is that 4 minus 6? Sorry? 4 minus 6, you're right. Yeah, that's why it's below it. Okay? Now, what happens with each one is to go across and down. You happy enough with that? Shh. Okay, you go. Okay. So, if you really, let's say you're struggling to understand this, okay? And you're really looking to, to figure out, is it the same line? What you could do is, you could figure out another point that's on this line. If x equals 0, what's the y value? We're going to get minus 2y equals 16y equals minus 8. So there's another point on that line, 0 minus 8. And if 0 minus 8 undergoes the same translation, what will happen to it? We have to add 2 to x and take 1 away from, sorry, uh, minus 9, because it's minus 8 minus 1, minus makes it minus 9. Now guys, now all of a sudden we have two points, don't we? And if we have two points, we can get the slope, and if we get the slope, we can get the equation of the line. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do... Uh, just find the slope for us, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And what we'll get here is uh, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're going to get minus 6, minus, minus 9, divided by, what's next? Uh, x2, which is 4, minus 2. And what we should get here is we're going to get a uh, 3 over 2. The slope is 3 over 2. Okay. Now, just out of interest, is that the same slope as the one that we just did? We can figure that out, can't we? Is that the same as the slope of the original line? Bring 2y on its own. 2y equals 3x plus 16. Divide by 2. y equals 3 over 2x plus 8. Is that one also 3 over 2? Yeah. Yes, it is. So, bottom line, when you translate points across the slope of the line is maintained. Do you understand that? Because they all get changed over by the same amounts. Okay? Next one. We then have to get the slope of the new line. Okay? Or sorry, the equation of the new line. Well, we know that this point here, 4 minus 6, is on the line. So what we can say is 4 minus 6 is x1, y1. And then we can put it into the equation of a line formula. And what we're going to get here is the following. We're going to get y minus minus 6 equals 3 over 2 x into minus 4 cross. That's a plus 6. Multiply it by 2. We're going to get 2y plus 12 equals 3x minus 12. Uh, bring the 2y and the 12 over the other side. We're going to get 0 equals 3x minus 2y what's it? minus 24 3x minus 2y minus 24 equals 0 what was the first line equation we were given? actually I'll stop there for a second any questions? Uh, translations if you want to write this down translations maintain slope okay Central symmetry in a point, I'm pretty convinced it doesn't maintain slope. We'll find out in a second, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you is something about central symmetry. Central symmetry is basically, if I had central symmetry in the origin, okay, and I had the point, uh, let's call this 3, 2, it's central symmetry. Now guys, uh, the next thing is, okay, 
tree two. Avoid that central symmetry in this. It goes, how would you bring tree two all the way down to zero, zero? It's take away tree to x and minus two to y. Then you take away another tree and you get minus tree minus two. You basically get the same distance out the other side. Does everybody understand that? Now, in this question we have on the board, is that we have a uh, central symmetry in the point uh, minus one minus one. So what happens is we have the point two minus five. Okay, two minus five is located on a slope. Did I say three over two it was earlier? So it's located on a positive slope and it's located here. Okay, this was a rough diagram. Two minus five. To the left and above to the left and above is minus one minus one. What we gotta do with each point on this line is we bring it we bring our points all the way up and we reflect them out the other side the same amount. Okay? Now what was the other point I used earlier that was on this line? Does anybody remember it? I think I let x equals 0 and then y equals minus 8. Zero minus eight. So 0 minus 8 is the other one, okay? So, so 0 minus 8, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do the translation for both of them, okay? So the rule is if I'm, putting, uh, if I'm putting 2 minus 5, I put 2 minus 5 to 1 minus 1 minus 1. The rule is here is minus 3 to x and minus, sorry, plus 4 to y. This point gets thrown out into, uh, what's it, minus 3. So it's going to be minus 4 and 3. Minus 0 minus 8 also converges on this line here and goes the same out the other side. So you can actually see this time we're actually changing the slope because it, they, not all the points travel the same distances. They all travel different distances in this question, okay? So it goes, from, it goes to uh, minus one, minus one, <coughs> which in turn, that means it what is a minus one to x and plus seven to y. So we're gonna get a uh, do, do, do. We're gonna get <coughs> minus two six. Now we can go about getting our uh, new line. Okay. Uh, the reason is okay. Begin. Okay. Uh, so basically we have a new line, okay? So we're going to get the slope of the new line, and the slope of the new line is uh, y2 minus y1 into x2 minus x1, and what we're going to get here is 6 minus 3 divided by uh, 6 minus 3 divided by minus 2 minus minus 4, and that is going to be 3 over 2. Slope is maintained. Okay, so the slope is maintained. So this means that if it happens once, it should probably happen the rest of the time. So slope is maintained through translations and central symmetry. Okay, guys. So now we got to do our we got to do our equation of a line x1 y1. So it's going to be y minus y1 equals m into x minus x1. Once again, the same deal. We're going to get a y minus 3 equals 3 over 2 into x plus uh, x minus minus 4, which is x plus 4. Cross multiply 2y minus 6 equals 3x plus 12. Bring the y's and the 6's of the other side. 0 equals 3x minus 2y. That's plus 6, so it's going to be plus 18. Is that one? Okay, uh, the undersea tunnel is built from Wicklow, Ireland to Marfa, Wales, as shown in the diagram. The tunnel will be 45 meters below sea level at P. So guys, at P, where is P? All right, so that is 45. Okay, 
and we'll gradually rise five meters to the point S, which is 4.5 kilometers from Wicklow. Okay, sorry, and we'll gradually rise five meters. Okay, lads, shh. I'm going to convert everything into meters. This is 5,000 meters away from Wicklow. Point S is, okay? The distance from Wicklow to uh, Morphe, which is 92,800. 92, okay? I'm going to take away my 5,000. This means that from here to here is going to be 87,800. Okay. What is the slope W to P? Well, the slope W to P is rise over run. Frank. Right. Your run is 5,000 to the left, is 5,000 to the right. Your rise is negative. It's minus uh, 45. So the slope is minus 45 over 1,000, 5,000. What's that in the calculator? Quickly, let's... Shh. Minus nine over a thousand. Minus nine over a thousand. Thank you. Okay. Now, shh, B. What is the slope of P to Q? P to Q, it tells me the slope, doesn't it? It tells me that it rises five meters. With a gradual rise of five meters. A gradual rise of five meters means that its slope is five meters, okay? So, <coughs> PQ slope equals five. Okay, what's the slope of Q to M? Now Q to M is a uh, Q to M. Okay, what information have I not used yet? 4,800. 4,800, perfect. Now, I need to find out what it is from here to here. That's the problem at hand. Does it tell me? It's 40. No, it's 45 minus 11. Oh, sorry. Sorry guys, I got that wrong then. The slope isn't five. It says it says uh, a gradual rise five meters. So you're right, I misread that question. It's actually forty meters, okay? So look, I have to calculate the slope of this one now. So to calculate the slope of this one here, what I do is I go across and up. So what's rise over run this time? Rise is it rises up five meters and it got runs across 87,800. Will somebody put that into the calculator and let me know what it is? It doesn't if it's 4,800 to the point Oh, so, sorry, sorry. Guys, it's 87,800 to the very end, which actually means i got to take away 4,800 4, from that. That gives me 83,000. Good spot, Peter. Okay? Now the full thing is... Uh, is yeah, 87,800. So 83,000 guys. So what is it over 83,000? 5 over 83,000, anybody? 1 over 160,000. No, 16,000. 1,016,600. Just 16,600. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, stop.